Welcome to the Author Blur Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Maynard. Today I speak with Adriana. Adriana is an accomplished writer of five novels. She's won multiple awards. She brings her amazing life into her stories that will have you on the edge of your seat. She explains to us about how she brings her life as a lawyer, a professor, and her love of traveling and the travel she's done into her stories. Also, you'll hear her discuss the fact of she tries to put multiple stories into her books to add more value and entertainment to you, the listeners. She loves her fans. She loves to be able to put out these stories and you will love to listen to the conversation we have. I hope you enjoy it. I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a good time. Amazing author. If you go to her website, you'll see she has multiple awards that she's won. She has two series of books totaling five different books. And from what I've seen, they look steamy romance, mystery, thriller kind of books. So Adriana, if you can go in and give us a quick description to start off with about yourself, and then we can talk a bit about your books, if you don't mind. Hello, Eric. Thank you for having me today. Uh, well, uh, my name is Adriana Gavazzoni. I'm a Brazilian author. I live in Brazil. I've been a lawyer for 31 years and a writer for five. Uh, I'm a former professor of law. So uh, everything around my life is about reading or writing. And I, I just love that. Science inspires me that I think my main inspiration comes from my, my life experience, from meeting people, uh, paying attention to what people say, and uh, uh, observing. I love to observe people when there is nothing more inspiring than people. Right, and I agree with that. People are definitely interesting and they can lead you to a lot of different ideas. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've watched over time and just said, you know, I can see them being this type of character. So with that, tell me a bit more about your book. So you said that there want your first, was it the first series was erotic thriller or help me out here because I'm not a big romance reader. So I didn't get a chance to get into your books, but I did try to review them. Like I said, they do look like they're a steamy type of novels let's not even pretend but honestly i'm somebody that doesn't understand romance very well in the novel industry can you explain your books to me and to everybody else so that they can decide if this is something they would be interested in uh well my first trilogy uh they are psychological and erotic thrillers so they are steamy. right yes uh, uh the, uh, my, my first trilogy, the, the, the books, they are a caldron of flavors. They have mystery, uh, they have uh, romance also, and uh, it's hard to choose a genre. Oh, yes. Of course, they, they, they are steamy, but steam is not the main part. Steam comes as my main character on the three books is a, a shrink. Okay. Uh, she treats paraphilias, there is strange sexual behaviors. So yeah. the steamy part of the book comes through her, uh, her clients. Okay. Uh, it's not the main story. It's the okay. stories their clients tell her. And uh, as I love serial killers and their stories, I don't love serial killers. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I, I love stories about serial killers. I decided to add a serial killer. So there is a lot of mystery and uh, there is a lot of legal scenes. And the legal scenes, I have the help of a former special agent from FBI. Right. So they, they are composed as they really happen. It's, they are fictional, but with lots of research, so they are trustable. Oh. Uh, 
so is is the, the 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 character. She's a shrink, and when I decided to compose her and all her patients, I studied a lot to compose every trace of their their paraphilia to a uh, text from American Association of Psychiatry. And uh, as I'm a professor, I'm a firm believer in research. Okay. So uh, that's how I compose the first series. The the second no, the second year is completely different. I was a little bit tired of uh, psychological thrillers, and I decided to write mystery and action. All right. So let me so, ask you this, if I may. Sorry to interrupt you, but. The first book of one of them is Behind the Door. Is that the one, the is that the one with the, so that's the first in the series. Is that the one with the therapist and the FBI agent? Or is that the one that you're saying is more of the thriller mystery? Uh, no. The first series uh, was uh, Behind the Door, Lara's Journal, and The Brilliant Game. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the help of this former agent, All right. and they are psychological thrillers. Okay, so let's dive into that book a little bit if we can. Since it's the first of a series, most likely when people go to read you, if they find you interesting and want to find out more about you and read your books, I'm assuming that would be the first in that series, because that series there, if I'm thinking right, has three books in it right now, correct? Correct, so, correct. Tell me a bit about that book. I saw, I watched the little promo video you had on Amazon's webpage for it. And I forget if it was on your website as well, but let's dive into that. So give me a high overview of why is these two characters getting together in the book to do something? I mean, what are they trying to achieve? Because I'm just very curious. Uh, the lawyer, uh, he requires the service of my character, Shrink, mm -hmm. because he needs to defend a man who killed his girlfriend during a sex game. He needs right. to prove it was a sex game and not a cold murder. So uh, he hires an expert, uh, and uh, here comes the Shrink to help him to the diaries of the that cow and the, the diaries of the main of all the, the, the diaries of the killer. Yeah. Uh, she will try to build a psychological profile yeah. of the killer and of the girlfriend. So where's the FBI agent come in on this? No, uh, the FBI the agent the other one? I'm sorry. Uh, the FBI agent helped me to build the legal scenes when the FBI gets involved. Because okay. around around the shrink, a serial killer starts to kill women, kill uh, torture and kill women. And uh, it, it all happens around the shrink. So FBI gets involved and the FBI is going to investigate who this killer is and why he's killing and what those crimes have to do with the shrink because okay. it seems just connected to the crimes okay so is so is it kind of a team or is the therapist the main focus throughout the entire series uh there are two books inside one book in this series. Every book mm -hmm. contains two stories. Oh. Uh, the shrink is going to analyze the story of the killer. Okay. Uh, the killer who killed his girlfriend. So when she starts reading his diary, his journal, uh, she penetrates in another story. He tells the story of uh, one year, uh, his one year relationship with the dead girl. And uh, so there are two stories. Okay. The book is divided exactly into stories. All right. So where do these books take places? Are they centralized in a specific area or do you have them? Because I saw that you've talked about your love for travel. And a lot of authors I've read that love travel tend to take their stories to other areas. So do you focus your stories into a single area? Like, 
Brazil? Do you focus it in a city in France or in Germany or wherever? Uh, no, the first book uh, basically uh, happens in New York. Okay. And the Hamptons. The second book uh, is placed in France, where I live and study for a while. So right. uh, it's a place that I also love. And the third one goes back to New York. Okay. Uh, the other series is different. It goes around the world because it's the story of a sniper that chases criminals around the world. And then it goes to Austria, it goes to Spain, and it goes to Argentina, uh, even United States, but it's a, it's right. a travel, it's a complete travel. <laughs> well, that sounds good. It sounds like you like to add different regions and different... Now, do you go visit the areas that you write about, or do you research and then hope to go see it when you get a chance? No, usually I write before I know the places, because before I know the cities, uh, sorry, the country. Usually, usually I know the places and then I write. The only place that I still don't know and I had to write about was Russia. I've never been there and it seems with all this conflict, <laughs> I, I had planned to go this year, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't see too many people traveling there right at the po moment with everything going on. But no. with that, it sounds like you have an extensive knowledge. You have actually are writing from experience of your travel, so you know the city, so you can be more immersive into what you're writing. So with that, tell me a bit about what got you into writing these books. What made you or how did you decide to start writing or a professor of law and a lawyer. You write textbooks, textbook, writing textbooks and writing novels has quite a bit of a gap between the two styles. So can you- Yeah, a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain to me if you would, how you ended up writing the novels? Because it sounds like you went from one side and then back to another side. Uh, well, First of all, I think I was born a storyteller. I could tell stories to my parents and my siblings since I was a young kid. Uh, then uh, in Brazil, when you are a lawyer, you are pretty much a writer because we need to defend our clients writing their stories to the judge. Right. It's not like in the United States that you go in front of a brain jury and you have to make all that theater, here is different. You write the story and then you talk to the judge. So writing is my, my whole career, my whole life. Okay. But as a voracious reader, I, I've always wanted to be an author, to write my own novels. I always thought I could, and one day I tried. Well, so <laughs> and with that's five, how it became. And with, is it five or six books that you have out? Because I thought I saw six. five novels, five oh, novels. Okay. So with five novels out, so you said you've been writing for five years, which means you're putting out a book a year. Do you have plans for another book coming up? I'm writing two. <laughs> okay. What two are you writing? I decided to add a first book for my first trilogy. And I also going through a, a very complicated, uh, situation in the legal field uh, and I'm very inspired about that story I have to do now and I'm writing about it. It's my first book placed in Brazil. Okay, well that'll be interesting, especially for people like me that know very little about the country other than I hear it's beautiful and normally Carnival is supposed to be a very exciting time, but you said from what some of your emails to me said, it's not really that exciting at this point, which is sad to hear. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, because we saw this COVID uh, story, uh, we can people can go out on the streets, can gather together, uh, can can do the the party the carnival used to be. So it seems next year Carnival maybe can can go back to normality, but not this year. 
I understand. Well, hopefully next year is much more livelier times. So keep our fingers crossed. That way you at least can, since you're riding in Brazil, have something to work off with Carnival adding into it. But so you have the one that's riding in Brazil. And I'm sorry, what was the first one? It's to which series? The trilogy, you said? The trilogy for Hidden Motives trilogy. Okay, so with that there, is that a prequel or is that going to be the fourth in the novel, in the series? It's going, it's going to be the fourth. Okay, and is there any little hints or something you can give the readers for what's going to be coming in that? So if somebody's read the first three and they're listening to this now, and they say, well, what is the fourth coming? Is there anything you can tell them? Well, my shrink decides to visit the real killer in the jail. He's in Denver facility, and she decides to psychoanalyze him inside the jail. So it's going to be about her visits to him, about uh, her practice again, new clients, new patients, new crazy stories. And who knows if you really caught the real killer. Hmm. We have still try to find out. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Sounds like there's still a lot to unpack there. So with all that, so you also, if I'm looking at this right, you've been on several magazines. You've been a dancer, if I'm reading that right. You've been very, you've, I, uh, you speak how many languages? Four languages? Four Work, languages. Working on Chinese as well. It's hard. I don't think in this life I'm going to speak Chinese because it's really tough. I don't have much time. But uh, I have hopes for that. <laughs> Chinese with the four tones and all that is very difficult to learn. Uh, Complicated. Every time I hear it, I just kind of zone out at this point. So I can tell you I've attempted it myself and it's a it's very difficult. But it sounds like you with your languages, you do like to learn. You do like to absorb. Do you add any of those languages and things into your stories as well? Or do you do that to learn? And what other hobbies do you tend to find you're doing that you try to add into what you do? with your publishing, your writing? Uh, I love to learn uh, languages. Uh, I think I've learned so many languages because I love to communicate and I love to travel. And I have this necessity to communicate whenever I travel. I try to discover the flavors of the country I'm going. I'm trying to experience the country's lifestyle. I don't go there to be a foreigner. I go there to try to live the life uh, the, the natives are living. So languages help a lot. I love to cook and flavors are very important to me. So our odors, smells, I, I love, when, whenever I travel, I bring a lot uh, <laughs> of, of different uh, seasonings and herbs. One day the police is going to catch me when I cross the border. <laughs> you have to be careful that. Uh, yeah, because I, I really love to discover things. I love to dance. I'm not a professional dancer, of course, but I love to dance the tango. I worked for eight years in Argentina, and it's a fashion that came from that time. I love to read. Uh, I'm crazy about literature. I love to watch movie series and play with my dogs. My dogs are the, the kids I've never had. <laughs> so uh, they are really, really important to me. And you can catch me uh, running with them in my backyard <laughs> and talking to them also. Oh, trust me, so, I have cats and I talk with them constantly. So and, and they understand us, don't you think? I think they do. I think they argue with me a lot less than my kids do. So, <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, you said you're a voracious reader. 
what do you read? What other books do you read just in your genre? Do you read all sorts of genres? And if so, who do you read mostly? I, I love to read uh, serial killer stories. I love to read uh, mystery books, main of all, thrillers, legal books. Uh, I can read pretty much anything. I don't like much. I'm not a romantic person. So I don't like much of those novels that are about princes that need to be rescued by uh, the, the charming prince and things like that. I don't believe in fairy tales. I'm, I, I'm not a happy ending fan. So I don't read much that kind of book. I've read something when I was a teenager, but not now. And uh, I think I prefer mystery. I love a good mystery. I understand. So you get... So obviously, fairy tales, happy ending. You're not into the damsels in distress stories, which, believe me, I can understand that very well. So what authors then are you reading? So, and do you use any of the, I'm not saying use their information, but for an example, if you're reading an author, reading a book, and you're reading the story, a lot of times the different things that we read tends to the concepts or they develop ideas for our stories, who do you think that you're reading, one, that you like right now, and two, is there any authors that you feel has impacted your writing? Uh, I think uh, Emily Brunty uh, impacted a lot in my writing. Uh, she was so dramatic and I love a good drama. Okay. I love a good... Uh, Oh my God, you're going to suffer a lot and you're going to have to build your happy ending because it's not going to be easy. Right. Um, another book that I really love and inspires me and I've read it five or six times is The Devil's Advocate. I think it's perfect. It's wonderful. I'm rereading right now for the first time, The Silence of the Lambs. Oh, good book. Great book, great book. Uh, it really gives me chills. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. And I think whenever I read a good author, uh, it's not about being inspired by a scene, but sometimes for the way they are writing, sometimes they give you a trigger for some scene you need, it's all inspiring. Of course, reading, watching movies, it all inspires. Oh yeah, I agree with that. So, all right. So with that there, let me ask this if I can. With your two series, and with those books that you have out, let's, I don't, I'll let you pick which one to start with, but since they're seemingly different types of series, with one of the series, what types of readers would you expect to really get into those books? Who do you think would be the ones that would be drawn into that series? And then if you could tell me the same about the other series, I'd appreciate that. Okay, I think Hidden Motive series uh, need people who, who don't judge because it's all about not judging. It's okay. all about accepting people's traumas and dramas and trying to understand. So uh, more mature readers, of course, it's not for kids or teenagers. Okay. <laughs> it has a steamy sense. But for, for people that are not going to judge a person, and the, the second series, Where the Road Goes, is for people who uh, are able to adapt in order to survive. People that know they can be like a rock, not changing their positions, not changing their places, and trying to survive in this world. 
It's all about people trying to survive and people trying to adapt. Even if they need to turn into a sniper to survive or if they have to immigrate to a farmed country uh, without uh, speaking the language, it's all about adapting. Okay. So um, the public for, for the second series where the world goes, mature, of course, because I, I believe sex is part of life. It is. If I have characters, they are going at some point to 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 have a set a, a sex scene. Uh, it's not anything pornographic in any of the books, but they are there. They require a more mature public. But if you are someone that you think you can adapt to something like, for example, a pandemia that <laughs> just happened. Right. We had to adapt in order to survive. I don't talk about a pandemia, but it's just an example. For people like that who can adapt and not die, uh, they are good readers for my, my books. Okay. Well, that sounds good. I mean, it sounds like that it's going to keep people very interested. You have two different groups that can both get into the different series that you have. So it's not just one type of person to uh, focus on, which is fantastic because I know a lot of readers will go in a multiple area. So that's a fantastic thing. Is there really anything additional you feel the readers need to know about you that you think that would help them be interested either in you and your book? I know you have a very active social media from what it looks like. I checked out your Twitter and Instagram where you were in New York recently, it looked like. So those, yes. were, those were interesting. I saw that you had on your social media where you won an award and you came in. What did you get? You got the Browns Award, which is a very impressive thing. If I re I'm trying to remember the name of that award. Sorry, my... I've been reading a lot of readers, readers favorite. Yes. The readers favorite, which you also have that listed on your website with all the other awards you've won. So yes, for, for, uh, six gold medals for, for my books is spread uh, among the books and some great, uh, uh, bronze medal. And I was panelist to, Great contests, also honorable mentions here and there. All right. Well, it sounds like your books are getting quite a bit of attention and winning awards, which is fantastic. So tell me, if somebody wants, other than my website, authorblurb.com, where I have a profile of you set up, where it has a link to your, prof to your website and the information you provided me about yourself and your books, where else can people find you? Where would they best be able to contact you if they want to ask questions? Do you have anything you prefer them to do? Oh, the, uh, one thing about me is I love to communicate with my readers. I have no problems answering questions, so they can reach me through all my social media. Oh. Uh, the, uh, the address for them is in my website, abegavazzoni.com. And I can answer through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever. I, I have no preference in that. You can reach me and I'm going to answer. Well, that's fantastic. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to your website in the bottom of the show notes. So with that being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You sound like you're a very busy person. So I'm going to let you go and then hopefully... You, when your next book comes out, we can talk some more and you can tell me more about that book. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for having me today. It's very important for us authors to have this kind of opportunity. Well, I'm very happy to have you here. It was a joy to talk with you. And if you can just hold on a second, well, I'm going to end the recording and then we can talk a little bit more. So you heard the conversation and I hope you enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, if you'd like to find out more information about other guests, you can go to authorblurb.com. You can find out information about me. You can find all the episodes that we have there as well. You can also find a place there called Show Support where you can donate to the show. 
I hope you do because your support does help us improve the show and keep it going. So everything done is through me alone and your help is obviously helpful. So with that being said, if you have anything, leave a review. I'd love to hear from you. Go to the website, tell your friends, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you.